there, Taylor here, and welcome back to another session of Pellet Tech 101. We're continuing our series here on the St. Croix Digital Control Board. What I want to cover in this video are the diagnostic codes. Uh, so St. Croix has had three different generations now of this digital LED touchpad control board. This is the, uh, the latest uh, that they have, which is used for both pellet stoves as well as corn stoves or, or multi-fuel stoves. Uh, and then the furnace units will have a different uh, control board or a different circuit board. Uh, but as we look at this control board, uh, what we have built into here are a series of diagnostic codes uh, that can basically help us troubleshoot um, by looking at the front end on what's going on. So uh, I will say that the diagnostic codes that are going to take place on the, the latest St. Croix digital control board here uh, might be different than some of the previous. Again, this is the, the third generation. So I do know that some of the previous uh, digital control boards by St. Croix will have different diagnostic codes. Uh, it is important to check your owner's manual. Um, if you have your owner's manual yet for your specific unit, it will indicate what those mean for the control board that's in your stove. Um, otherwise, you can always comment on the video here. Um, let us know what your control board looks like and what code that you're getting. Uh, and we're always happy to assist and, and get you back up and running 100%. But again, specifically looking at this control board uh, right here, the, the newest style uh, control board, um, as we receive uh, a diagnostic code, we're basically going to see uh, a series of blinks by one of the numbers here. So uh, first I'm just going to run you through uh, those blink codes and what they mean. And then from there we will uh, we'll hit briefly on some of the causes uh, that could be taking place. So uh, the number two LED light right here, uh, if we see a blink on that, that's going to uh, indicate an issue with our vacuum switch or, or with our pressure switch or with vacuum in the stove. Uh, as we see a number three light blinking, that's going to indicate an issue with our proof of fire, uh, our proof of fire switch uh, or proof of fire within the stove. Uh, as we see a number four light blink, that's going to give us an indication that we have an issue with our high limit. Uh, and then as we see a number five blink, it's going to indicate an issue with the uh, photo eye or with this three wire jumper uh, that's coming off the back of the board here. Uh, I will make a note that the generation board just previous uh, to this one, uh, if we saw a number two and a number three light blinking together, that's what would indicate a high limit issue. Uh, again, on the latest board right here, it's going to be the number four light. But should you have a generation just previous to this one, and you see a two and a three light blink, that is going to indicate a high limit issue. So let's just start with the, uh, the first one right here, the number two, the, the vacuum switch issue. So uh, the vacuum switch or the pressure switch in the stove is essentially uh, checking for air pressure within the firebox of the stove. And it's also checking for pressure within the exhaust uh, manifold and the exhaust vent pipe going out the wall. So uh, if we're seeing a number two light right on here, and we know we have an issue with the vacuum, um, could be a number of different things. Uh, I guess just some of the, some of the basics right here uh, would be making sure that the stove is thoroughly cleaned. Um, in over 90% of the cases where we have issues going on with a unit, it is related to a cleaning or a maintenance issue or, or ash buildup or blockage restriction somewhere in the unit or the vent pipe. So I guess the very first thing that I can say is to make sure that the unit is thoroughly cleaned, make sure that exhaust vent is thoroughly cleaned. Uh, your owner's manual will go over that in detail. If you need further assistance or tips or tricks, uh, just leave us a, a comment on the video here and uh, we're happy to assist. But uh, uh, again, when I lose uh, a vacuum, uh, again, whether it's in the stove or whether it's in the venting, the number one, go ahead and, and make sure that the unit in the vent pipe is thoroughly cleaned uh, uh, to the best of your ability. Secondly, um, if my door was left open, my firebox door or my ash pan door, if that was left open uh, for any length of time, that is going to trip the vacuum switch. Uh, so again, um, obviously when the unit's in operation, we wanna make sure that that door is shut. Uh, sometimes we will open that door during operation to, to wipe off the glass with like a dry paper towel. Uh, as long as that's a, a short period of time, uh, I think it's under 10 seconds wiping off that glass and closing the door, the unit will go back into its, you know, its normal functioning uh, cycle or its normal operation that you have it in. If you leave that door open for a longer period of time than that, it could fault and again, uh, give us the, the number two blank that we've lost a vacuum in the stove. 
um, uh, gasket seals that are around the ash pan door and around the firebox door. Those gasket seals need to be tight. Um, you know, over time they, they will loosen up or have gaps and we'll start to notice a difference in the, the overall efficiency of the fire, uh, as well as again, having issues maybe with our, our vacuum switch tripping. So it is important that uh, we make sure that our gasket seals around the door and the ash pan uh, are tight and secure and tight all the way around. Um, um, <clears throat> obviously, again, if we have anything res restricting the vent, uh, again, whether it's ash that's plugged up in there, whether something foreign got in the venting, uh, that can definitely trip our vacuum switch. Um, we could always take a look at the exhaust fan itself or our combustion blower. If that is not operating correctly uh, or not operating at proper voltage, uh, it will not lock in that vacuum switch. So uh, we want to make sure that our combustion fan or our exhaust motor uh, is operating correctly. And then lastly would be the actual switch itself. So the, the vacuum switch is, uh, uh, it depends on the model, but generally speaking, it's about three inches in diameter to as much as maybe five inches in diameter on, on some of the earlier vacuum switches. Um, but the, the switch itself has a small diaphragm inside where it opens and closes. And uh, obviously we, we have seen uh, issues or, or failures over the years with those vacuum switches. So it could be uh, an issue with the actual vacuum switch. So number, number two, again, is our vacuum switch. Uh, number three, as we look at number three, that's going to be our proof of fire. So as the unit initially starts up, goes to the startup cycle, whether it's say a corn stove where I'm manually lighting the fire, whether it's a pellet stove where it's auto igniting, it's in a startup sequence. Uh, there is a small, what we call a snap disc or a limit switch uh, that's located over on the exhaust fan uh, of St. Croix stoves. And the purpose of this switch is that once it reaches what we call proof of fire, um, or it reaches over a certain temperature, that switch is going to lock in uh, and basically allow the unit to run in the normal operating mode. So that proof of fire switch, um, uh, if I am seeing a, a number three light blink, it's gonna indicate an issue with my proof of fire. So uh, the most common time that a person would see that is if the unit completely runs out of pellets. Uh, completely runs out of pellets and uh, it turns them all the way out of that hopper, um, it's obviously going to uh, lose proof of fire and we're going to get a, a number three blink right here. Um, but other than that, um, the only time really that we, we see that would be an actual a failure with that particular snap switch. Uh, so that proof of fire again is going to kind of lock in and it's going to allow the stove to go into normal operating mode once it's locked in and it, it feels that it's warm enough to do so. And that switch also is going to shut off the, the exhaust fan or the combustion blower once the unit is completely cool. So if we're having issues with that exhaust fan continuing to, to run and run and run, even after the stove is off and shut down and has been for quite some time, then we may have an issue with the, the proof of fire switch there. Number four, again, high limit, or again, earlier boards, two and three blinking together. Uh, newer board, number four, is gonna be our, our high limit. So a high limit is a, another snap disc or safety switch uh, that's in the stove. The high limit is designed that if the stove was to ever get too hot as a safety feature that it shuts off the fuel feed in the unit. The high limit switch does have a small reset button in the center of it. Um, depending on the model, that high limit switch is e either located up by the upper auger shaft area or it's located near the back firewall. Um, again, uh, high limit switch tripping isn't all that likely, but if I have issues where maybe my, uh, my convection blower, my, my room air fan, isn't running as it should be, or maybe that blower has failed. Uh, obviously the unit is gonna get too hot because it can't disperse the heat, so it's gonna trip high limit. Um, maybe if my, uh, if my burn pot hadn't been cleaned as regularly as it need be, and uh, I had excess ash buildup in the unit, and the, the fire started to overflow that fire pot and feed up the, the chute, uh, same thing, it's going to get too hot, it's going to reach high limit. Uh, again, the high limit switch does have a manual reset, so it's just a small little button in the center of it that I can push uh, to reset that limit switch. However, we always want to look at why that high limit switch tripped. Um, uh, in rare circumstances, it, it could be the switch itself just getting weak, uh, but in most cases, uh, we want to take a look at why it reached high limit. So we definitely want to inspect our room air fan or our convection blower uh, in a stove. And then obviously, um, like I mentioned earlier on, the number one uh, thing to look at is, is the cleaning and the maintenance. Make sure everything is clean. We should always have a nice, crisp, torchy, efficient fire 
you know, time we're seeing a, a fire pot fill up or we're seeing a, a lazy, sooty fire, uh, we have areas that we need to, to look at and address. Lastly here, we have uh, number five. So again, number five is going to indicate an issue with our three-wire jumper uh, or our photo eye. So the photo eye was only used on a couple specific models for a very short period of time uh, with St. Croix. One of those models would be the Element. Uh, but again, they only had the photo switch in place for a very short term or a very short run. So um, in stoves where you did have the photo eye, this three-wire jumper is going to be connected. In stoves that don't have a photo eye, this three-wire jumper is simply going to be left uh, to the side or it's just going to be left as it is. The three-wire jumper does have a small plastic jump uh, on two of the prongs right here. So. Uh, should I happen to see a, a number five blink and I don't have a photo eye in my stove, uh, I'm going to want to shut the unit down, I'm going to want to unplug it from the wall, and I want to check this three-wire jumper. And I guess uh, just physically inspect it, make sure the little uh, plastic jump is on the two prongs, and that that's pushed all the way down. Uh, if I do have a photo eye where this is actually connected to the photo eye lead wires, then I'm going to want to inspect the photo eye uh, that's in the stoves. The photo eye is basically checking for light and acting as a proof of fire uh, in, uh, in, like I said, a couple select models that they had that in. Um, the other thing with the number five, so if everything looks good, I don't have a photo eye in the stove, everything looks good on this wire, the plug is still in place, and I'm still receiving a, a number five blink or a number five indication, uh, in most cases that would indicate we have an issue with the actual circuit board or the control board itself, uh, and that needs to be replaced. But definitely visually inspect uh, the three wire photo eye jumper and the little jumper on the pins uh, first. So uh, important thing, always check the simple things first. Um, again, cleaning and maintenance is always going to be number one. Um, and uh, from there, uh, any specific questions, like I said, comment in the video here. We're always happy to help uh, get you back up and running 100%. Um, make sure that everything is safe. So uh, that just about covers the diagnostic codes that we're going to see on a St. Croix digital control board. Thanks again for joining us for another session of Pellet Tech 101. We'll see you soon.